hi welcome to my podcast catching loops this week is my second podcast so so happy you've all joined me see my cat Levine I think she wants to join in too she doesn't join in very she's a shy sort of a cat when everyone's around she sort of likes to stay out of the limelight she's a calico perfect cat perfect cat for a um, crafts person calico and she's Levine see my beautiful cat we're going to sit here for the whole thing. Hey? Do you think you'll join me today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't usually kiss you, but I am today. <laughs> um, first off, I don't have any finished projects. It's been so hot here. It's so humid. <sighs> it's back to summer. We haven't had a real summer this year. And yesterday so humid and those high clouds and the humidity we just knew there was a storm coming so it came last night a lot of thunder and lightning momentarily cool the place down and then it's humid again today oh and the man outside has decided to vacuum so as there's no finished projects this is my work in project progress my Andrew Maori cardigan I have made a lot of progress I finished both sides and nearly the back so pretty so I'm hoping to um oh, he banged the door so this week I'm ho hoping to get um, finish the back and <clears throat> get the sleeves done and you know, have the um, button binding done. This is so thick. I hope it fits me and everything when it's finished. so pretty and I've never done stripes before but I was thinking I love stripes I should do them so and then this perfect pattern came along and I'm thinking yes and I also had a lot of Rowan um, felted tweed from other projects left and I thought well you know I should use them because I want to use up my stash I'll not use it up because there's a ton, but um, make a dent, especially in the filtered tweeds. Mm. So yeah, I have uh, had made progress. It's good. What else have I done? Being so warm, you know. I'm just melting. I don't have air conditioning. This kitty. Don't have air conditioning. I just open the windows. Hope for the best. Usually there's a solely buster that comes in about three, four o'clock in the afternoon from the south off the ocean. Cools us all down, blows through. Just hoping that happens today. So hot. In this program, I'm going in this um, podcast. I'm having um, taking you on a, a walk through a coastal walk on um, near Watson's Bay in Sydney, just down the road from me. It's a beautiful coastal area. Hope you enjoy it. That'll be um, near the end of the podcast. It's beautiful, and it was a lovely day, not too hot, so. That was nice. Also, um, we'll see how we go. 
Okay, hope you like this podcast. This is an example of how I knit um, left-handed. There's um, pearl knitting and plain knitting. Um, it's very difficult for me to read graphs. It's okay with stranded knitting because I knit it in a round and I can follow the colours. But when it comes to cables and graphs, it's it's pretty much impossible because um, it, it goes from right to left and I read from left to right. And so the cables are sort of twisted around the wrong way and it's very hard. This is why I don't like graphs. Not with stranded colours, but you know. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give a demo and see what you think. This week I've had some yummy acquisitions. I rarely get acquisitions but um, I've been saving and I've always wanted some cones to knit with and this week they came from England. I'm so happy. I've seen people with these beautiful British um, wool cones and I just really wanted to make myself a jumper out of it. So I'm going to make a cardigan actually and I'm going to do it with colour work. So I've got a cinnamon, I've got three cinnamons and a morning frost. Two morning frost, three cinnamon. I'm going to hold them together and uh, really nice <laughs> cardigan. Heavenly. Nice berry shade, and I love it. Also, this morning we went to the Granny Square at um, Newtown, one of my favourite Morrison Sons stores, and this is what I got. I needed some, um, I needed some blue and purple to finish my. Um, this is Rowan Felted Tweed to finish my cardigan. A striped cardigan, Douglas by uh, Andrew Mowry. I'm nearly finished. I've got the front and just have the back to do on the sleeves. And this is what I had left, so I just need to get some more. And I got some um, May lightweight baby alpaca, 100% alpaca from Peru. I'm going to um, knit this together with um, some sock yarn for my friend Judith for winter. She, she likes long socks and they're hard to find ones that fit perfectly. And so that's that. And also I got four of these beautiful skeins. Beautiful or what? These are Algeria Grande from Uruguay, Manas del Uruguay. This color is, it always has a color on it. Dragon. Could that be right? Maybe that's a location. <laughs> Peach and chai. Sounds like tea. Beautiful acquisitions. So I'll get John to make them into balls for me. So lucky. So lucky. Ready to knit. Uh, 
this is my um, workbook that I've um, kept from the beginning of the 1990s to 2000, 2002, I think it was. Um, it's really fun to look back on, you know, on projects and see how, see what you made early on. Hope you like it. This is next. In this week's podcast, I thought we'd have a look at my workbook that I've, uh, this is an early workbook from 1990 to, let's say, early 2000s. It's interesting to have a look at um, past work. This is mainly quilts. <laughs> this is my workbook. This is my son when he was mm, three and a half. I still have those cactus in those little plant, um, little cars on the windowsill. They are 33 years old. I think I've bonsai them. An early quilt. the kids must have done this or do you keep their drawings or maybe it's me I was making um oh no it's a template for a big quilt that I was making but a long thin quilt and um that is the main centerpiece of it it's a pink quilt I applicate that and then um sew it around it it's very interesting Newspaper from 2000. This lady was is really important in the um, Quilters Guild, Annette Garrow, doctor. She um, preserves and writes books about the early um, quilts in Australia, how they were made. Very interesting person. And then I write a bit about, you know, about each one, what, is, what I was thinking at the time. This is a mini quilt I made. The pieces were, um, you know how they used to send out little um, squares of fabric, little samples, and you'd get like 12 in a pack of their newest fabrics in. Another mini quilt that I made. I was I really like this one. It's um greens, very small. Here it is. And I called it Aquarius Rising in Virgo. That's me. And this was made from sample green greens also. log cabins there were so many different variations that you could have on a log cabin setting I loved it I made lots this is the first one I made 1981 to 85 and then I got onto Irish chains everyone does Irish chain I made. I made it for my friend Thelma. We were very good friends. She went to live in America. And this is my, I had a pen friend, um, Barbara Coburn, who lived in Canada. She was a beautiful quilt maker also. We were friends for about 10, 15 years. She came to visit her and her husband, Dick. That was a nice time. We went to the quilt shop in Berrimer and the quilt lady had a photo with us. She made more intricate quilts than me because she'd been making them for longer. A Celtic quilt, can you believe it? Oh, I like to keep samples of um, 
fabric that I was using at the time and I had um, quite a few meters of these fabrics so beautiful blues for log cabins I also made um, fabric dolls she is sitting in my little chair I made lots of these dolls they sold like they were for pin money when the children were younger it was something for me to do and earn some small amount of money this is a mini that I made that I was very very happy with the pieces are like minute um, the triangles are like quarter of an inch triangles <laughs> Here is the pattern for it. And that is the whole, that's the size of the quilt. Pretty small. I made that in January 1995. Some more minis. Here's my daughter, Jordana, when she was little, holding a Japanese quilt. And the design is by Margaret Rolfe. Margaret wrote a book about paper, um, patchwork. It was very popular in 1996, this must have been. Friends Forever. Mm. Thinking about what I was going to make. Postcards, I made some postcards. Size. Pictures of uh, inspiration. I also made this um, quilt. Oh, I really love this quilt. It's in a book. Um, I think it's in a log cabin book. It's um, a beaver. Can you see him? So beautiful. The fabrics are all batiks. I really love this quilt and I called it Beaver Qua Beaver Creek. It was um, it was probably a um, foundation pa uh, paper piece but I obviously didn't know how to do paper piecing back then so I English paper pieced it. More minis. Some writing about the 1994. Another quilt for my friend. This is the first quilt my daughter Sky made. She was about 10 when she made that. And she embroidered her name in it, 1996. So pretty. And I made a quilt for my daughter Jordana. She still got it. I made it for her bat mitzvah and it was dogs. She loves dogs. And so I made her a dog quilt. Some log cabins that I made. Owls. I love owls. My hand is starting to shake. That's me. <laughs> Jacob's ladders. Who doesn't love a Jacob's ladder? Oh. Another log cover. This is my favourite flower of all time, I think. It was growing outside my house. The 1997 quilt show. I made my husband um, a jazz quilt and he makes a gramophone horn so I put a gramophone in it. Oh, this says, look at the sewing machine, um, Singer, birthday present from John. It's a little tiny one. A real one, a really small one, a Singer. So pretty.
Ah, this is a dog quilt that I made, and here's my daughter dressed as a dog. <laughs> In a dog costume. That's a quilt. I collected those dog prints for a couple of years. It's a hexagon quilt. What do you know? Put it in the quilt show, 1998. There it's uh, writing about it. Quilt for Jordana. There's our dog sitting on the couch that they were never allowed to sit on, but they are sitting on it. I think we must have been out and then spied them through the window. <laughs> ah, my garden, my side garden, native orchids. Uh, my husband and I went to Florida and we went. I went to um, Key West with my friend. I was so lucky to go to Key West. It's such a beautiful place. Some of the pages don't have much written on them. Drawings. Cat quilt. Oh, I love this cat quilt. Pattern. I still make that cat quilt sometimes. A tapestry that I made. I had to sit near the window early in the morning to make it, uh, to sew it because I couldn't see. <laughs> oh. Jacob's ladders. I must have made like a lot of Jacob's ladder quilts. I love them. I made for Eliza. Hmm. Ah, this is a uh, pattern for the uh, long quilt that I made. Rather political. <laughs> But uh, beautiful. It reminds me of a stained glass window. I was at uni at the time and I was thinking about these subjects. That's the cartoon for the quilt. Just here I entered it in 2003. Still have it. Ah, my daughter in law, Shana. I made it in 2007. Ah. My best friend, Judith. Judith loves making quilts. I will do an interview with her when we can go back. Mm, thinking about fabric by the look of it. Ironing. Sewing. Pieces in the box. Jacob's Ladders. Oh, I hope my hand's not shaking too much. Here I am. Wrapped in a quilt. <laughs> oh, this was um, a quilt that I made. Oh, I didn't make it. I um, made a piece for it, and it's right in the centre. Will it focus? There we go, it's a Quilters Guild, um, New South Wales Quilters Guild, um, a quilt for, ooh, 2002, and I made a block right near the middle, and that's it, there. I was so happy, and every time there, there is a quilt show, that usually hangs up. Oh, I made this quilt for my son Colin, Bear's Paw. Oh, it's a Jacob's Ladder, but it's got these beautiful bear fabrics. Remember those? Mm. Judith made this quilt for me. It's hanging in the Brick room. Focus. I'm gonna have to put my phone down because I am wobbling. Yes, 
continuing on. My hand was wobbly. I needed to rest it. This is my friend Judith in her studio. She has a lovely studio. We will visit there one day. My son Nathan with his cat quilt. More Jacob's Ladders. This is such a fun book. I like looking past photos. Here we are at the quilt show in 2011. <laughs> I make lots of um, quilts to give to. Uh, it's such a nice gift to give. This one is called Night Flight. And, oh no, it's not. This was the elephant fabric that I made, and I hand quilted this one with African fabric in 2013. I love elephants, but I find them. I think it's very sad there, plight. Pieces I've kept. <laughs> 2016. 2018. Getting on to my more intricate um, hexagon quilts. Mm. And that's it. And now we're going to have a look at um, the out and about. That should be fun. This is a really nice walk um, along the headlands. Hopefully I can get some music to go with it. See how you like it.
that's it for this week. If you like, please subscribe and like. Tune in next week. Hopefully I'm having a podcast every week. See how we go with that. See how I um, manage to get through some things. Do some hand quilting in winter with the quilts that I've got pinned up, ready to go. And I'm also in a couple of swaps. Um, we'll have a look at those next week. Also in this podcast, I hope you enjoyed having a look at my um, workbook. That was interesting. Reminiscing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.